Joe Biden's puppet masters. You heard me right. So who could Joe Biden's puppet masters be? I mean, Joe Biden, he's not smart enough to be making the decisions he's making on his own, is he? I don't think he is. Is he smart enough to fake dementia so he doesn't go to prison when this is over? Maybe if he survives his term, he is old and frail. But this whole thing about Joe Biden uh, 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 just being some dumb, unwitting person, I don't think that's very true. I think Joe Biden's a player in the game. I just don't think he's at the top of the card. I think he's a mid-card fighter, maybe. I think maybe he's uh, uh, taking the cuts, making the pay. He's a con man, just like Hunter, like father, like son. They are shysty car salesmen. They are con men. They are snake oil salesmen. Come one, come all. Hunter and Joe's Biden extraordinaire. Buy your votes here. Your global reset there. New world order for sale, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful apartments right on the beautiful coasts of Iraq. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, if you are listening to me, then you obviously are seeking the truth. And the truth is that if you follow me, this rabbit hole goes much deeper than you think. All right. This all leads to the Great Reset. And if you've never heard of the Great Reset, the Great Reset in a nutshell sounds pretty crazy. A couple years ago, you would have looked at me and you would have said, James Lane, you're a conspiracy theorist. James Lane, you're out of your mind. James Lane, you need to go to the loony bin. But no, you're going to listen to this and you're going to go, hmm. Yeah, that sounds like it could be true because it is. There's too much evidence, all right? The Great Reset is this thing. They say it just happened, but it's years old in the making. A bunch of companies, a bunch of businesses, a bunch of different corporations, countries, world leaders, everything all around the world, the global elite themselves, the Davos crowd, the George Soros's, all of these folks, right? They come together and they say, hey, man, this world is screwed up and we got to fix it. Well, that's what they tell you that they're saying. What they're actually saying is we're in danger of getting discovered. That's right, folks. You only will hear it here on American Reveille. Nobody else is going to say what I'm about to tell you. We are in danger of being discovered. We're super rich elites and we like to do bad things with kids. That is what's happening. Biden doesn't just sniff people because he's bored. Biden sniffs people because he likes to sniff people, ladies and gentlemen. And so do, so do tons and tons of wealthy elites. Now, not all wealthy people are elites. There are plenty of elite uh, 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 wealthy folks out there on their mega yachts. There are plenty of um, of um, of. Microsoft CEOs, there are plenty of Google CEOs, there are plenty of, uh, of international sultans and, and shahs and all kinds of folks with their hands in this. All right. The, the, the main thing that's really happening, right, is they're saying that they need to redistribute the wealth right? The planet, there's, there's climate change. Oh no. And if we don't do something, everything's going to 2030, the whole world's going to explode. Oh, woe is me. Oh, everything's falling apart. People are starving, super tornadoes, COVID-19, all of these things are happening and they've exposed this terrible thing. And what is this terrible thing? Oh, the world is an unequal place. The bad things happen around the world. Oh my gosh. You mean reality? Yeah, yeah, that thing called reality. They don't like that. You see, reality is not predictable. And rich, evil people that like to do bad things with kids and don't want you to know about it and want to close the curtain that Trump pulled wide open, they, they don't want you to see what's happening. They want to shut it down. All right. They want to put baby in a corner. They want to close Pandora's box. All right. And the only way they're going to do that is through basically a global takeover. I know it sounds out there, but if you're watching, I'm sure you've heard this before. You've heard about the N.W.O., the New World Order. We used to call it back in the day. You remember the 90s, the 80s, early 2000, the New World Order. They're going to create a one world government. They're going to take over everything and the lizard people are going to come and they're going to kill us. all. That is what 
people used to say. And we used to look at them like, oh, that person needs to take some medication. But with everything that's happened and everything out in the open and the changing of words, critical race theory, woke ideologies, the changing of definitions, this Bolshevikian, this socialist like takeover of all of our institutions, things just start looking a little more realistic. OK, they look a little more realistic. It, it doesn't seem like a hoax. It doesn't seem like a conspiracy, especially when you can put the money together, when you can put one and two together. They want to change everything. They want to inject social policy into everything. They want to create a socialist world without calling it socialism, a change, an upgrade, a new form of capitalism, very much looking like communist China. And we see how that is going economically. Now, they're socialists over there, so they can push some buttons and make things look good for a little while. But it's all falling apart just as it is here. All right. The World Economic Forum. They push this whole thing. They push the Great Reset. The articles come out there. They tell us what they're going to do. They work with a group called the OE. CD, the Office of Economic Cooperation and Development. Ooh, that sounds extra scary. All they are are Trojan horses for a worldwide socialist takeover, plain and simple. And it's not really socialism. They, they use socialism as a tool. All right. But really, it's just the global elites that are really cult like creepy people that want to do whatever the hell they want and don't want to be held accountable. They weren't held accountable for generations. The door was ripped wide open and things are coming down the pipeline. The pressure is on and they don't like the heat. So they want you to get out of their yard. And if they have to enslave the world to do so, well, why not? Biden's build back better plan. It's not his. It's not his. You see, the person with the money always plans the scheduled events. The person funding everything makes the decisions. Listen, let me ask you a question. If you and your buddies were going out somewhere and you were paying for everything, if you were taking your friends to dinner, don't you get to pick the restaurant? Do you, do you take out 50, 60, 70 bucks and go to a Chili's with five people? That's probably in today's inflation. That's probably enough for two people. If you go to a Chili's, right, do you just do you just look at them? Do you just bring them there? And <clears throat> do you feed them all? Right. And then do you just did you just go to some restaurant that wasn't. That wasn't on the menu. Did you not have any say like it's just confusing to me. It's just confusing to me. I'm so glad I recovered that brain fart I almost had there. It's so confusing to me that you can literally sit there. Joe Biden can. And he can say, this is my plan, the Build Back Better plan. This is my thing right here. It's not socialism. It's not the Great Reset. It's none of these things. This is my Build Back Better. I created it. I'm Joe Biden. I am a uh, hypochondriac. No, hypochondriac's not the word. What's the word I'm looking for? Hypocrite. That's the word I'm looking for. He's a hypocrite and a liar. Probably a hypochondriac, too. But then again, you see him break his mask uh, policy so much. I don't uh, believe he's a hypochondriac at all. So the person with the money always plans the events. So there's the World Economic Forum, right? We talked about this. There's the OECD, just mentioned as well. These are companies we'll talk about in a second. I'll show you a couple things about them. But people fund them as well. And those are the people that actually rule the world. Again, Build Back Better, it's a socialist a Trojan horse. It's a takeover. And it's not just happening here. It's happening in countries across the world, plain and simple. The other day, I, uh, I was laying down doing some research, looking at some stuff, resting my back, and Biden came on the television. I usually have Hulu on like 24 seven because I have the news on so I can be up to date so I can make sure I don't sound completely like an idiot while I'm doing these episodes. 
And I I came across Joe Biden giving his build back better infrastructure speech. Oh, pat myself on the back. We passed this crappy legislation. I noticed something very odd. I had to write it down about nine minutes in Biden cites pretty much why he's doing certain things. He is going off certain data and the data that he cites when he says that America is number 13th in the world in infrastructure. So he had to do something about it. He got that information from where? From the World Economic Forum. He goes, according to the World Economic Forum. All right. Nine minutes and 20 seconds in, Biden cites the OECD. He says we're 35th in education. Can you imagine what type of education the OECD wants to teach your kids? Can you imagine? I can imagine. I can tell you. They want you to have nothing and be happy. They want to train your kids to be Marxists. I'll probably say it again in this podcast, but did you know that 33% of all young people under 30, not just want Marxism, but believe in it, in their being. They believe Marxism is good. They've been taught that 33% of people under 30, what's another generation? Will we be at 50%? Will we be running a socialist candidate against somebody? Will it be a socialist candidate against, uh, I don't know, a libertarian? I mean, how crazy could this get? It could get a lot crazier than it is right now. I'll tell you that. But I heard those. I heard him say it nine minutes and about nine minutes and 20 seconds. And I said, that's odd. I listened to his whole 30 minute spiel. It was more like 15 minutes and then 15 minutes of him having silly questions where he looked like he was going to fall over. But really, I listened to the whole thing. I found what he cited and I started to do a little bit of digging. All right. I really started to do a little bit of digging. And I found, all right, I found that the WEF, the OECD, and a company named Sampo Holdings, a company getting money, lots of money, billions of dollars from wealthy investors, rich people, and their dealings all around the world. They work hand in hand with the World Economic Forum. They work hand in hand with the Office of um, Economic Cooperation and Development. They work hand in hand with all the socialist bad guys you could imagine. I've got some stuff right here on it. This is actually from Times Magazine. It says the Great Reset COVID-19 pandemic has provided a unique opportunity to think about the kind of future we want. Time Magazine partnered with the World Economic Forum to ask leading thinkers to share ideas for how to transform the way we live and the way that we work. Very, very interesting stuff. It's scary stuff. It proves that these people are in cahoots. They say it, right? It's not shocking when you call them out and you say, hey, you guys are doing some great reset stuff. They go, yeah, what are you going to do about it? That's literally where we are at. And you can see on their website, you can go to the World Economic Forum's website, they're partnered with hundreds of businesses, companies, world leaders, investors. And it makes me wonder, is it too late? Are we too late to the party? Are we just seeing it now as the shackles are closing around our wrists and ankles? This is some scary stuff. Very scary stuff. I mean, I'm looking at this paper right now. I did my research, printed out some articles, lots of notes on here. And I found some interesting stuff. This Sampo Holdings, like I said, they have ties to the WEF and the OECD, uh, Time Magazine, more Microsoft, all these different companies. This is literally coming from Sampo Holdings. All right. These are the people funding, sending money, operations, different things, right? Different projects, planning different ways to get in the minds of your child. Remember education right? Remember infrastructure. Infrastructure is no longer just buildings. It's human infrastructure. Remember to them, it's about your happiness. Happiness, that thing uh, that people strive for. But happiness does not always bring you purpose. Happiness can drive you insane. This article is called Redesign Capitalism to Incorporate Social Value. Redesign 
capitalism, that thing that's based upon our, on our needs, on trade, on human instinct, and incorporate social value. The world was facing daunting challenges before the COVID-19 crisis, climate change, environmental destruction, worsening inequality, and widening disparities are problems that some among us choose to downplay or dismiss. You see that attack right there at the end? Some among us choose to downplay or dismiss. Those are the Trump supporters. That's them talking about you and I. You see, they've been setting this up for years. They've got an entire network. When you go to the website, it shows that this company, this uh, OECD, is 60 years old. It's 60 years old. COVID-19, they said, is a reckoning. It's a reckoning. All right. They see it as an opportunity, a reckoning. It was their own wake up call, their own reveille, if you may. And they never wanted to let that crisis go to waste. They saw COVID-19. They might have even released COVID-19 alongside China. And they said, now is the time to seize power. Now is the time to take control through fear, through power. We will rule you forever. And then we can go back to, you know, doing bad things with children and hopefully you won't know about it anymore. They want control so that they can have their godlike freedom back. But they have another thing coming. They have another thing coming. This is scary. All right. Here, look, they, they try to mask this horrible statement. They, they use this affirmative statement to make you become open. It's like hypnoti uh, hypnotism, right? They use an affirmative statement to, let, to get your guard down, right? To warm you up, to let you go. They agree with you. You go, oh, this person's not so bad. They agree with my points. They say capitalism has lifted countless people out of poverty. However, and that's a key word. When you see the word however, my friend, however... With the great expansions of digitalization and globalization, you mean that thing that you guys wanted, globalization, capitalism has produced greater inequalities and divisions. And that is a bold lie, as statistics have shown that capitalism has raised far more people out of poverty than it ever has put in. There are plenty of statistics that you can find on that. They said that uh, with the expansions of digitalization and globalization, capitalism has produced these greater inequalities and divisions. And capitalism itself, in its present form, is not truly contributing to the well-being of humanity. And we need to reimagine capitalism to incorporate social sustainability. Oh, that keyword right there. Sustainability. Sustainability is a keyword for racism, socialism, taking people's money that they've worked hard for their whole life, stealing it from them, giving it to other people who illegally come into the country. That's sustainability to these people. All right. We have to save the planet, even though we have no idea what is happening, because nothing is happening the way we think it's happening. The Earth's going through certain cycles. And though, you know, we might be responsible for, for doing better, to be better shepherds of this planet, right? We're not responsible for making ourselves into cave people again, all right? Destroying our convenience, destroying our lives, destroying our energy dependence, destroying our wealth, destroying everything, just so we can be the benevolent creatures that you've always strived to be. Oh, looking down at my nose, looking down at the peasants floating above the... Yeah, listen, we're not gonna play this game. We're not. It's not going to happen. You're not going to do it to us. You're not going to make us feel better by saying, yeah, we agree. Capitalism has done great things. But listen, I'm a business major. I know what that is. I know how to use transformative leadership to convince uh, uh, employees to do things. Right. And these folks are using certain tactics and techniques to put words together to get you to let your guard down, to soften to their ideas. They want to reimagine capitalism. They don't want to destroy it. They want to reimagine it. That's different. That's still capitalism, right? To the unintelligent, the uninformed, the dumb and dull, that's still capitalism. But you and I, we know the difference. We know the difference. It says capitalism is a socioeconomic system designed to meet the demands of people and to redesign the system. They need to create a new capitalism. And these are some of the points that should be considered. And you need to listen to this. This is some crazy stuff. 
It says, create a system that can generate good demand to meet the various objectives of the sustainable development goals. Businesses should pursue the happiness of the whole society in line with environmental, social, and corporate governance. Why is it Nike's job to worry about my happiness? Why is it the hardware store's job to worry about my mental health? These people are sick. They're out of their mind. Capitalism is not about your feelings and worrying about your feelings, worrying about saving the planet and worrying about saving society as a company is only going to lead. And as you can see, if you look out your window, it already is to the downfall of this very country which is exactly what they want. The global elite want the downfall of all Western countries. They want us to rise up again as socialist uh, uh, hexcapes, socialist pits, tar pits, where we can sink into in their form, their version of free modern convenience, where we can be complacent, we can be lazy, we can own nothing, we can be happy, we can literally become the movie Idiocracy. Absolutely ridiculous stuff. It's absolutely ridiculous stuff.